you've just come out with fairly path-breaking set of recommendations. It's probably, if I may use the word, you've tried to change the paradigm from what it was earlier. I want to go back to a conversation you and I had back in May when you told me that the pricing of spectrum has to be seen with respect to market conditions and the overall condition of the economy. It is not an absolute at any point of time. The recommendations that you've come with have a significantly lower reserve price than what was there in the past. What does one make of it, that the market conditions and the economy are that much worse today than what they were even, say, a year ago? No, I think that would be uh, conflating two separate ideas. What I said to you in May was a very simple proposition that at any point of time, the value of spectrum is not absolute. You could sell spectrum today at a price X and you can sell the same spectrum at a date Y and you'll get a different price. It's like uh, the price of a stock. You sell it today or you sell it one year later, what price you get has no relation to the other. The, answer, the question you're really asking is, how did you arrive at such a lower such price. a yeah. reduction in reserve price bottom line answer first we did a completely different approach to pricing traditionally the approach to pricing has been i look at india on a pan india basis and i say hey i want to collect 1500 crores of revenue i fix that in my head and then i allocate it across the 22 zones more, more often than not, I use a rule of thumb to allocate the reserve price across 22 zones. This is what was done in 2010 for the 3G auction. And exactly the same thing was done in the 2012 recommendations, where you began with a pan-India number, inflated it, indexed it for technical efficiency, and then allocated it across 22 zones. Now, two auctions have been held. And they have not been entirely successful. So you have to ask yourself, is that the right way to go about it? And if that's not the right way, what is the right way? And so we pose the issue that rather than go top down, why not go bottom up? If indeed India is not a single market, but is a market sub consisting of 22 sub-markets, each with special characteristics, is there any way we can determine value of spectrum in those particular zones. Because the problem with the old approach was, A, you got it wrong because you were doing all India, and then you got relative prices wrong. The price of Andhra versus the price of Bihar is not the same, in the same ratio as in the 3G, which is what we did in 12. It may depend on the fundamentals of those two states, and you need to factor those in. Now, once you started asking yourself the question, can we do it bottom up? Then the question became, if spectrum is a function of variables, what are those variables? Well, what was available to us? We had information available, market information. We've sold 1800 spectrum. This information is available. You have some inf technology impacts the value of spectrum. You have some information on technology. Economic factors impact, you factor it in. Now, no one model is going to capture all these. So what the authority did was start looking at different ways of breaking up different components to try and get a bottom-up approach for each particular LSA. And we did econometric methods. We estimated a cost production. We estimated a production function. We did opportunity cost models. We did... A slew of them, five or six. And then we went back to our stakeholders and said, look, guys, here are five or six different ways you can do it. And each gives you a different estimate, a different point estimate for the value of spectrum in each zone. But broadly speaking, they're in a similar range. One is a little more, one is a little less, but they're all within a band. And these are what we've come up with. Can you tell us 
what to do. If you think of some alternate, tell us an alternate. Now, the on God honest truth is that when we went to our stakeholders, they were all too easy and keen to pick holes in the technical models. And I'm the first one to say that. No one technical model can ever capture all aspects. So if you're telling me each one has some shortcomings and some merits, I know that already. Can you give me an alternate? That they can't. They didn't. And in fact, most of them altogether bypassed valuation and said, look, we don't, I mean, in a sense, they said, damn you, we don't care what the valuation is. Just set the reserve price like this. And some said set a reserve price of zero. Some said set the reserve price as what it was in the 3G option in 2010. Some said index it and set the reserve price. But none of them were willing to link the reserve price to valuation. And the question we were asking is not about reserve price. The first question we were asking is how do you determine value? We'll come to reserve price later. First, let's agree that these are good scientific methods which will give you a reasonable valuation for the 1800 bit. Having concluded that part of the exercise, what we did was we got six methods and we took an average across all and we said this is the average valuation of spectrum for each of the 22 circles. All right, valuation is settled, put that aside. Now how do you come to a reserve price? We looked at the literature on auction theory and we had mentioned it in detail in the consultation paper. We did a fair amount of academic research. We pulled out economic papers and we looked at experience in Europe and other parts of the world. And it was very varied. But whatever the experts, and these guys are people who are renowned experts in both auction theory as well as auction practice, gave us a range anywhere between 50 to 70 percent easily, could be justified. Lower? 50 to that is if you have a valuation which is 100 percent accurate, then any range within 50 to 70 percent of that is a good guess. Again, we went back to the audience to the stakeholders said, what do you have? Depending on where they were coming from, if they were not bidding for 900, they said, make it 0.25. <laughs> uh, and somebody said 0.46, somebody said 0.6, somebody said 1. Again, complete non-unanimity. Nobody was being especially helpful. Now, the truth of the matter, Vivek, is this. Valuation spectrum, whether it's 1800 or 900, is somewhat like a statistical random variable. It depends on the operator. And for a person who's on the other side, the auctioneer, like me, we have no a priori information on what those valuations are or what the likelihood of those valuations is, the, the probability distribution of those valuations. So all we could come up with was a sort of expected value, expected value as an average. Now, many people suggested that perhaps one way of doing it is, look, just go with the expected value as the reserve price. That is, use one hundred percent of the reserve valuation is the reserve price. The problem with that is that, look, I know and you know that we have not exhausted all possible methods of valuation. Given the information and technology constraints and time constraints, We've used only five or six models. If we've got it wrong, because we've omitted some model which we should have, then we could end up jeopardizing the entire auction by setting a price which is too high. And that is why I think the authority veered around to the view that, look, take your average valuation. That is based on economic method. It's based on science. And it's objective. Everybody can judge it for what it is and apply a factor of 0.8, which is what the authority did last time. I said, fine, and bingo. That's exactly how you got the reserve price. Short version of this rather long explanation. What we did was, A, we approached it bottom up, not top down. Two, we did not determine relative prices a priori on a rule of thumb basis. We let the models 
throw up what the relative prices of these circles would be. Three, we did valuation as a separate exercise, and then we did reserve pricing as a separate exercise. That is, first fix the valuation, then come to the reserve price. So that is the sequence of thought that has gone on, gone into the process for recommending reserve prices. In other words, sir, what you're saying is you've moved away from the paradigm of presumptive pricing, shaping policy to a different paradigm. In other words, therefore, yes. Yes. all these 1 lakh 76,000 crore loss or somebody else saying zero theory loss, auctions didn't, I, I mean, on hindsight now would one say that that is not really the way these numbers should have ever been looked at in the first place. Yeah, I, I am inclined to agree with that view. I, I think the authority also thinks that. I think we, we say it quite candidly in the foreword as well as in the text. Let me put it to you this way, like as we put it in the, in the, in the foreword. Supposing I fix a price for Spectrum today, 2030. And this is going to be valid for till 20 years to 2033. Now, supposing in 2023 the price of spectrum is much higher, are you going to say that we've incurred a huge loss? Because in retrospect, in 2023, you can look back at 2013 and say, oh, we should have set a price much higher. Now ask yourself the counterfactual. Supposing you could determine 2023 prices today. If you try to auction, in 2013, spectrum at 2023 prices, where would you be? Now, this is the danger of falling into these hypothetical counterfactuals. Meaning this is not economics, it's not good economics.